What's up, BookTube? Sandy Golson back here with another Stephen King list video. And this one, I'm gonna talk about the top 10 Stephen King books that I haven't read, but want to read. That's coming up next. All right, so I got my handy dandy list right here. And coming in at number 10 is Bag of Bones. Now, Bag of Bones is a book that I have seen a number of times and it just sounded really interesting. Now, first of all, you have Stephen King and that sounds very interesting automatically to a lot of people, but then the title really grabbed me and I looked at it and it, and it sounded really intriguing. And uh, I thought, you know what? This is one that it, it's kind of like, I was kind of on the fence about it, but I thought, you know, this sounds like really good stuff. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. Uh, there's a there's a creepy factor right there. Uh, it had great cover art the first time I saw it, and I thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a try. Coming in at number nine is The Cell, ironically enough, right here. And I think anytime you have a novel where you're, you're getting into technologies and, and, and the things that can happen with technologies, I think a lot of times that's really intriguing stuff for a lot of people, uh, sometimes with interest and sometimes to, to be scared. And sometimes those of us who have conspiracy theories, uh, we are probably already thinking about a lot of the things that are gonna happen in stories like this one. And so uh, I was really excited about that one. It just sounded uh, really, kind of intriguing and uh but i haven't been reading as much stephen king or i hadn't read a lot of stephen king for a long period of time and in the last probably year or so i've started to read more stephen king so i've started to revisit some of these stories that i've thought about and heard about but never actually got around to reading coming in at number eight is a book that i just recently purchased uh, as a kindle book and that is the colorado kid it had a really intriguing cover art uh, uh that was just extremely like creepy and kind of sexy at the same time. And so for a lot of people, that's like all she wrote, it's a wrap. You don't need to really say anything much more than that. So, uh, but I saw it and I thought, you know, this is really uh, one that kind of grabbed me. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and check this one out. And it just kept jumping at me. I around the same time that I read uh, and saw the book Joyland. And um, I think that might be part of like, not a, not a series, but maybe a collection of books that, that Stephen King has put out. So I'm looking forward to reading that. It was actually a really short novel. So I'm, I think it's gonna be one that I could probably devour pretty quickly. Next up is Night Shift. And that's one of Stephen King's collections. And the interesting thing about Night Shift, and it's a book that I've been wanting to get my hands on for a long time, is that Night Shift includes Children of the Corn. So um, I've actually read, well, let me rephrase that. I have seen the movie many times and I've listened to the audiobook Children of the Corn. So, or at least parts of it. I didn't get through the whole thing, but I actually want to read this book. If I remember correctly, it's a fairly short story, which you would expect in a collection like Night Shift. So I'm excited about that one. I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I like short stories and uh, Stephen King is, is, uh, kind of a master of short stories that really hit home, um, it, which is ironic because Stephen King, uh, he writes like huge books like It, and uh, then another book that I'm gonna have uh, later on this list that I'll talk about that actually comes in at number one on my list uh, that are really, really long stories that uh, some people are just kind of like, man, that's a long story. Okay, I know I'm gonna pronounce this one probably incorrectly, but uh, I think it's Lissy's story. Uh, it sounded really interesting, uh, intriguing. It kind of grabbed me, it kind of hooked me. I think it was a stretch where Stephen King was cranking out a lot of books and this was one of them that came out and it sounded kind of interesting and I, and I almost grabbed it a few times when I saw it. Uh, it just going through like the, the, um, the pharmacy store or going through just the convenience store and it was just one of those books that just happened to be on bookshelves quite a bit when I was walking through stores and uh, I wanted to pick it up and I did pick it up but I never actually bought it but I picked it up a few times when I saw it and I was just thinking about it and thinking about it and, and never really pulled the trigger on it but now more so I'm starting to think a little bit more like this might be one that I think I want to check out. Coming in at number five is The Dark Half and that's a, a Stephen King book that I did have a copy of, but it's one of those copies that just kind of walked away somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but it's around here somewhere. I just gotta make sure I just look 
a little bit harder and find it because I did find that I had another book that's coming up on this list uh, that I found and not even remembering that I ever even had the book and I ended up finding it. I was kind of like, ooh, you know, like a great prize at the bottom of a Cracker Jack box. Coming in at number four is a book that I think I have about three or four copies of and that is It. And the book It has been made into two different movies, an older movie that I want to say came out maybe early 90s, and then one that came out, a version that came out more recently. I haven't seen the recent version, but I did see the one that came out in the 90s, which was <laughs> really a creepy, creepy story. Uh, it is a hugely long story. That's um, one of those books that just intimidates you just looking at it like, oh my goodness, like, how am I gonna get through this? I mean, is this even like humanly possible? And obviously it must be for a lot of people because a lot of people have read it and uh, have actually liked it. So um, I think that probably speaks volumes about the, that particular story and the quality of it. I know one thing, I've seen the movie, uh, the old movie multiple times and I really liked it. Um, it's not necessarily a cinematic classic, uh, it's not going to win like, uh, you know, major awards, I'm thinking, but it was really interesting. It was intriguing. It certainly grabbed and held my attention, even though it was a very long movie, uh, which you would expect because it was a very long book. Coming in at number three is a book that I have somehow never read, but I've seen the movie multiple times. I've never actually really sat down and watched the movie from opening credits to closing credits, which I need to do, but I've seen large chunks of the movie and uh, it's kind of like a Frankenstein way of viewing the movie. I've seen parts here, parts there, and uh, you just put the pieces of the puzzle together and you've seen the whole movie in, in one way or another. Uh, and that is The Shining. And uh, you know, just an outstanding movie. Uh, with Jack Nicholson, some iconic scenes in that movie, and everybody remembers, here's Johnny. Everybody remembers Red Rum and all that stuff. And so there are a lot of great things that go on in that film that were just iconic um, sayings or scenes that everybody remembers. And so um, that's one I definitely want to read. It's a little bit of a longer book, but uh, I, I definitely want to pick that one up and read it. Coming in at number two is a book that I found in my garage that I forgot I ever bought it. And I usually don't forget that I bought a book. I usually buy a book and then forget where I put it, but I don't necessarily forget that I bought it. But in this case, Salem's Lot is a book that I bought and I forgot that I bought the book. And then I happened to be cleaning out my garage a little bit and poof, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere and there it was, Salem's Lot. So. Uh, that's one that I want to read. It's a, it's a classic that a lot of people have read of Stephen King and a lot of people have seen of Stephen King. And so I definitely want to pick that one up and read it. It's not totally what I'm into. It's a little bit of a different type of book, but uh, I'm still interested in reading it, uh, mainly because so many people have, speak, have spoken really highly of it. So I think I'm going to give that one a try. And lastly is a monster of a book, and that is 11... 2263 by Stephen King and that clocks in at number one on the list of Stephen King books that I really want to read and this one is uh, kind of a historical fiction with a creepy edge uh, or so I'm told and so I'm really excited to jump into this one it sounds really interesting I know some people some booktubers have read this and they have spoken pretty highly of it and some others uh, looking at the reviews speak highly of it and so um, I do enjoy historic fiction so i'm thinking that this is one even though it's not like way back historic fiction it is historic fiction and i'm actually interested in reading this one 11 22 63 long books scare me sometimes but this is one i'm willing to take a chance on so there you have it the top 10 stephen king books that i have not read that i still want to read and hope to get around to reading at some point i've read many stephen king books already and i'm looking forward to reading several more at least <laughs>